We're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Time for Off the Press. Jide Johnson joins us this morning uh, via phone. Jide, it's good to have you join us. It's a pleasure to be with you, Mercy. All right, then. Uh, Jide. Thank God it's Friday. And um, good morning and good day to all our viewers all over the world. Yes, please. Well, we, we, let's take a quick look at the Guardian newspaper this morning. It talks about uh, the Senate presidency. Of course, they're still politicking. That's ongoing, despite the fact that we're done with the, uh, the 2023 general elections. Senate Presidency Kalu Akpabio lead a South Jostle for Lawal seat, Ahmed Lawal seat. Kalu Akpabio lead a South Jostle for Lawan seat. CBN takes custody of dominant funds from bank. I mean, you have funds that have not been attended to up to 10 years. Uh, then again, accountability concerns trail annual 63.46 million barrels oil uh, swap deal. Aviation workers threaten two-day warning strike uh, over CO or COS and welfare. How long will these aviation workers continue uh, this one-day strike, a two-day strike, and what have you. Then again, you find beaches for the rich, from solving chronic erosion to privatizing the beach. Uh, it feels like an editorial right there. Drama continues as OB denies British government apology over detention. Uh, whose report do you now believe is, was there really a detention? That's also another question. It's begging for answers. Uh, did the United Kingdom make an effort to apologize? Was there any apology? What exactly is going on? Too many questions begging for answers. But we'll move away from um, the Guardian newspaper. That's because we have the punch now. The punch says CBN4 expand. I think that probably that might just be an old one. Uh, we, we just have to look at what's uh, available for us. This morning, supplementary elections. APC PDP battle for two governor, 94 legislative seats. Atiku mobilizes support for PDP candidate. APC bags uh, uh, Barney to upstage Finn Thierry. And then you have IG alias fears of voter intimidation and deploys personnel in 2,660 polling units. It feels like we've had this story before, right? We've had this before, like a deja vu uh, going on. CBN to mop up dominant account balance on claimed funds. So if you still have cash, that you probably have forgotten. It's time, if not, it's over. Fuel subsidy, oil theft, gob, 29 trillion naira, says the federal government. Oil theft, gobs, 29 trillion naira. Hmm. Very interesting. Tunubu. Okay, that's in Pigeon English, but I'll just let that pass then. Buhari performs lesser uh, haji and Muslim urges or urge to be self-reliant. Obi Kwankwaso shared Atiku's vote, the Tinubu tells tribunal. And then you find building collapse. LASG Lagos State Government stops construction uh, projects on Banana Island. And House leadership reps elects from... Uh, 283 membership alliance. Uh, these are some of the headlines you find on the Punch uh, newspaper. Uh, we quickly turn our attention to the Nature News. Niger Delta communities seek FIDA and CESO's support to fight pollution. And then you find Osimen Eyes African Footballer of the Year Award, Victor Osimen. Again, you find Nigeria. That's a uh, the Nature newspaper, Nigeria far from achieving 15% Abuja declaration on improving health care. That's according to the WHO. It feels like that's a big slap on our face. Uh, I'm sure we can, we can actually you just make that right. World Bank, U.S. urge for reforms on climate lending. Uh, this paper focuses on, you know, the environment and all of its impact on our health and what have you. Adaptation to climate change remains key priority for Africa and negotiators. Well, that's it this morning. Uh, we'll just quickly uh, look at the Business Day newspaper and then uh, we'll have G.D. Johnson share his thoughts on this one. Banks borrowing from CBN triples in four months and banks standing lending facilities in seven months. You could see a pictorial representation. 
you could see this uh, graph or graphics, whatever it is you call it there. Legal hurdle grounds, NG Eagles take off. Then again, Peter will be INX, CB and top Google search trend in the first quarter. That's uh, the business news, the business news or business day paper. Street food sales soars as inflation bites. Banana Island building uh, collapse shocks developers. And that's it this morning on the business day. We just uh, have G.D. Johnson join us now to share his thoughts. Uh, G.D. Johnson, thank you so much for being part of the show this morning. Good morning, good morning, Miss. Thank you very much for having me once again. Jide, what are your thoughts? Uh, the federal government is saying that uh, fuel subsidy and oil thefts has gulped 29 trillion naira. Uh, for... They should not. They should arrest those that are corporate. They should arrest. They have different types of agencies of government to do the need for. The DSS, the ESCC, and all other agencies are there to do the need for, but if it's to arrest um, innocent citizens or on, on, on the allegation of, of, of trying to cause um, chaos or put the government into its recruit. They are quick to do that. DSS is quick to do that. The EFCC is quick to arrest the old boy. They, they, are, they are quick to, 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 parade, to parade the old boys. Yet they, they, they feel to, to, to do the first basic job of the assignment where EFC was put in place. is economic and financial crime to stop all of that from happening in government. Because those that are even committing economic economic tracing, they are not being arrested. They are being treated with kid gloves. And and here we are. Government will be telling us, can you imagine the government telling us that they've lost also amount of money due to oil theft? So you discover the you, dis, you, you, you discover the theft. So it, were the theft committed by 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 spirits or they are not traceable? Give me a break. <coughs> but but Jude Johnson. Yeah. This is entirely not just uh, about oil theft. It's a combination of oil theft and fuel subsidy, you know, the subsidy removal. That's between 2005 and 2001, uh, which, you know, according to the government, that was for subsidy removal. Uh, we had spent... Subsidy for who? Let's see. Subsidy for who? You know what this government said when they were in opposition with respect to subsidy? And you know what they said when they came on board in 2015, when the price of petroleum product were high, is there subsidy on diesel? No. Is there subsidy on kerosene, which is meant for the common man? No. Is there subsidy on PMS, where we will need clarification with, with, with respect to that? Because this present administration led the protest in 2012. When Jonathan administration threatened to remove subsidy, and at that time it was 92 naira. How much do we buy it now? So for me, as as far as I'm concerned, there is a cartel that operates in that sector. Don't forget that it was in that sector that Otedola, um, Otedola accused he, some House of Rep members of 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 of, of trying to 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 play games with him. We didn't we didn't know. The end of that. So, as far as I'm concerned, with respect to subsidy, only God can explain that to us whether we are paying subsidy in Nigeria or we are not paying subsidy in Nigeria. But my take is very simple: if you discover an infraction, if you discover an economic crime, go after those people and prosecute them, and then block the loopholes. What do you have to see? No, nothing. Anybody will have to see. We have agencies and institutions of government. Yeah, they told us that, you know, one of the things they told us in 2023 or late 2022 is that they privatized, they privatized NNPC. And then it was done with pump and drag entry. What has that got to do with, has it changed the fortunes of Nigerians when it comes to the revenue that comes to Nigerian government from NNPC? We know Aramco, which is the Saudi Arabian oil company, it's, 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 it's a pop. It has been privatized. We know we know Petronas in Brazil. We know <coughs> in Venezuela. We know what of this what these countries have done in order to minimize wastages and reduce the level of corruption in their oil and gas sector. But what have we done concerning our own? We play politics with it. 
um, we play politics. Did you bring somebody that has no experience with oil and gas to come and be? And then it seems as if that the people that will be the MD and the director of finance and the rest of it must come from a certain section of this country. You put round pegs in square holes. What do you get? You get this type of, you get this type of, you get this type of, this type of shenanigans that will be seen over, 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 over the years. And and then someone will come on the pages of newspaper or a spokesperson of the government or whoever from the government will just come. We have lost so amount of money to this. They should give us a break. They don't, they, these guys, they take us for a fool. Mm. Okay. Well, well, let's just leave, leave, leave that. So you are saying that uh, subsidy should be removed. That's what you're saying. Because we can't be spending that amount. They, I mean, they, remove the subsidy. Subsidy. they shouldn't be playing games with us. They remove the subsidy. Those that are collecting... Those that are paying themselves, claiming that they are subsidizing this product, these are the people they should go after. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. But but do you also agree that recently the Nigerian Labour Congress, uh, the NLC, has said that they, they're going to embark on strike. They're resisting it. And they have also made demands saying the refineries have to be functional. I'm asking if it's at this time that we're asking that the refineries must be functional or let's have functional refineries. Mm -hmm. The refineries are there. Uh, we have always chunked out resources for turnaround maintenance. And at the end of the day, again, uh, nothing, nothing to really write home about. So uh, it, it's, it's a lot to grapple with at the time. For You have a lot of people who say... I ask you uh, this question. Go ahead. Is there a subsidy on kerosene? Is there a subsidy on AGU? There are no subsidy. The subsidy on kerosene and, and, um, and diesel has been removed. The only thing they claim to have subsidized is... PMS. And the removal of subsidy as it falls down the price of AGU and kerosene. All you need to do is because you and I cook with cooking gas, with natural gas. If otherwise, all you need to do is to go and buy a, a five liter of kerosene, which is what the common man used to, 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 to cook. They should give us a break. And it, they also tell us that, you know what, we consume 60 million liters of PMS daily. Yeah. These are the people they should go after. All what they need to do is to do an audit first. What is the amount of fuel we consume daily in Nigeria? <clears throat> Once they do the audit, then the process starts from within, not from without. All right, then... Uh... G.D. Johnson, there's also another of uh, great concern, is that just barely 60 days to the expiration of uh, the present ninth National Assembly, the jostling for who takes over the leadership of the 10th Assembly is getting very intense. And we're getting feelers that uh, the likes of Ojus or Kalu and Akpabio probably might be taking the lead just as the APC is still planning as to who... Um, you know, planning as to what happens with uh, a location or saying, hey, who, who takes the turn for them? Well, you see, you know, we said it's turn by turn democracy. So when the, the president elect boldly declared that it is his turn, and then you recall shortly after the election, Oji Kalu was the first person to throw his hat into the ring, and he said, it's the turn of the southeast. It's not even the turn. It is his turn. It's, 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 it's his bad ride. Well, if you ask me, I'll tell you that if the Senate presidency is coming to the south, if you go to if you go to Akbabu, Akbabu asks more what it takes to be the Senate president than 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 not use or than not use or is the chief whip. What has he done with the chief whip since he has been the chief whip? Of what benefit and? And then the Senate presidency has gone to the southeast. It has never gone to the south south. So I think um, that should be given consideration. And if you are looking for loyalty within the party, within the party hierarchy of APC, somebody that has contributed to their party's fortune. Um, I don't know Akpabi from anywhere. Akpabi has done far better, far, far better than 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 um, Oji Uzokalu. He has he has all what it takes to be the Senate. To be the Senate president, talking from the candidates that we have put forward from the for, from the south. So, as far as I'm concerned, I probably is far better. He's demonstrated to be a better administrator as a governor, and he's, 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 he's been 
he, he, he's senator before and then minister of the federal republic. So, and I think he has he, he has a better temperament and better coordination than not user calculus. So, I'll throw my hat in the ring for Akwabi. That's if it comes to the south. But you know, politics being what it is, twenty-four hours is is there is every likelihood that this Senate presidency might go to the might, might, might go to the north to the northwest. Might go to the northwest, and uh, if it goes to the northwest, um, I, the, I see Senator Baran Jubrin, Senator Baran Jubrin clinching it. It might go to the northwest because there's the high stick politicking that goes with with the Senate president. Don't forget what happened um, in the in the in the in the in the eighth assembly with um, with with Kola Saraki. Imagine as the as the Senate president and then Ki Ikirimadu. Imagine as the uh, as 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 the deputy senate senate president and you know what happened uh, with the speakership too so um, well it's for the party to decide no doubt about that but it's i stick politicking but one of the things you can take out of this is that you could see that we have not finished the ninth assembly focus and attention is on the tenth assembly which will even be inaugurated after the inauguration of 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 the president so it's it's about the position when people say it must be zoned to them, it's not about their zone, it's about their personal interest. So people will use all manners of interest. And I don't think it should go to the Southeast either. They should start planning and building bridges. So you should build bridge. They should build bridge, establish network, so that it will be better for it to come to, to, to the Southeast. So for now, I think it should go to the South South or it should go to the Northwest. That's my that's my take. Mm. Either way, but I can tell you for, for a fact, either way, if any if if Akbabi is the Senate president, Akbabi will likely change it ahead of Ojus Dokali. If Akbabi is the Senate president, Senator Baran Jibril will be the deputy Senate president, or Senator Baran Jibril will be the Senate president, and Akbabi will be the deputy. They say, like, that's my that's my projection. Mm -hmm. I might be wrong. So, but, but do you think that this projection will meet the turn? You say uh, it, uh, it's my turn kind of democracy that has been practiced. Uh, so if that becomes the case, looking at your projections, say it will go to the northeast or the north central, do you think that it would meet the criteria of its zoning or rotation as it were? There's no zoning. There's no zoning in Nigeria. What's zoning? What's, people do things. Look, zoning. Which zones are produced president in Nigeria? You have six zones. Only three zones are produced in presidency. Only three zones. It's the northwest and the southwest. And Jonathan South South by force major. So uh, what what are people look for 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 when you talk about this, people use this zoning to suit themselves. That's just it. You have you use it to, to, to campaign for I've asked what has the Senate presidency done for the South East? It has gone to the South East. What has the Senate presidency done for the North Central? Bukola Saraki was Senate president. David Mark was Senate president. What has the presidency done for the Northwest? Bandits are killing people in Kaduna. The president cannot travel by road to Daura. So, what has the presidency done for people in the south southwest? We have had we've had president, we've we've had vice president for both in the office of the president 16 years, and there's a president elect. When people use this campaign, campaign, campaign team, it's just for their selfish interest. They don't care about anybody. They don't care about anybody. So, which one should South East be much more concerned about? Senate presidency, or the real, or the main, the president of the Federal Republic, where some of them were advocating that it's time for them they should start building bridges. They should build bridge. Andrew Sakali should build bridge, and wait for uh, 2032. Then that's when they should go to the South East. As uh, we cost down the conversation, or we, we continue to look at the papers this morning, let's also share your thoughts on other, you know, critical issues. And uh, that has to do with the economy of Nigeria. Uh, so you, you have reports saying that the CBN is planning to mop up dominant accounts, balances, on claimed funds, uh, what exactly do you think that uh, should be the case? I mean, uh, you probably might just have, you know, different opinions. They're that, saying they're going to... The, the Central Bank of Nigeria is planning to mop up dominant accounts. I mean, an account that has not been active. So you probably might have an account that's not active. 
Uh, it's been there for a, a period of time. And then you also have funds that have not been claimed over the period. Uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria is planning to, you know, take up some of this cash and uh, deploy them to other aspects of, of, of the economy. Yeah, the money should belong to the government and not to the private commercial banks. They don't even need to, to waste time. They, 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 I think that there are internal policies with respect to that when you have an account that is dormant for a long period of time. Um, so the money should not go to the commercial <laughs> enterprise, which are business interests. You should go back to the state. You should go back, for example, you should go back to the state. So if you die interstate, with no will and anything, the thing should go to back to the states. You see, your, dorm, your, your dormant account are more or less like an interstate account, so you should go to the states. So there's nothing wrong in it. However, if those monies are mop up, if the right thing should be done with it. You shouldn't go into private coffers. That's just the, that's just the challenge because once you, we always have good policies, there's no doubt. If you are looking for laws that regulate every aspect of human life, that will bring about good society developed economy, developed society, just come to Nigeria. We are highly intelligent people, cerebral, and have all what it takes to, to come up with ideas. We are innovative, creative, and dynamic. That's why you find Nigerian thriving in any part of the world, in any part of the globe, you see Nigerians there. But unfortunately, um, we are the physician that cannot heal it, that cannot heal itself. So it's... It's, it's the implementation of this policy. We hope that this money will not go into the private coffers, just like the subsidy remover, uh, the, the subsidy story we spoke about earlier, that Nigerian lost also amount of money to oil theft through subsidy and the rest of it. So it's a good policy. It's a policy that are inherent with central banks across the globe, but we should do the right thing for it. That's just my, that's just my take. There's a story which I want to talk about. Uh, earlier, you said the elections have been concluded. The elections are not concluded yet. They are going to, there are going to be supplementary elections in two in two states for the gubernatorial election in, in uh, Kebbi State and in Adamawa State. And then uh, 94 legislative states, as you read out in your... When you are going to the going to the papers, we hope INEC will be able to at least save some... We'll be able to save some, some of their... Um, smart faces with respect to this uh, particular election. We should know by the time we are through it. You see, we do elections. They do elections abroad. When they do elections, they give us exit poll. By exit poll, by the time the poll closes, within two, within two, five, ten minutes, we know projected winner. And in, in all cases, it's in most cases, we get the actual winner of the we want to know the person that wins our election once polling has closed. Once you close the polling, and then the results are tabulated. The results are tabulated in all of the polling units at the same time. So with technology and the rest of it, you should be able to get the real-time results without any human interface. Just within one hour after the poll closes, and then the, the, the results have been declared at the poll. At the, at, at the polling units, we should be able. I hope that will happen with this with this election because all of the all of the problems issues we are having post twenty twenty three election, we are taught that we will never have such things with the amount of money I make deployed for this election with the assurances they gave with respect to the planning, logistics, and actual execution of this particular election. I think some of them, if you if you listen to what Professor Mahmoud said over time. And if you listen to the arrogance that is displayed based on the assurances that Pastor Sokoye gave with respect to how this election is going to be, in, in, in natural sense, if people that fail in that circumstance have committed high offense against the state, when you are given responsibility to conduct elections, to superintend elections, and to ensure that the process is free, is fair, and it complies with the law of the land, then there won't be too much litigation. There won't be too much drama. You can see how heated our polity is. The polity is heated up. You can see different types of stories, different types of magadha, different types of issues outside that have become so divided. There are so many fragmentations. There are a lot of people. All you need to do is to just visit the, the, the alumni was have group for many schools or many relationships of 20, 30 years have been severed, all on the basis of elections. For what? For people that don't, don't even really care about you and I. 
But if the election was done appropriately and the person that wins the election knows that he wins the election legitimately, there won't be need for us to be going to court. You see how many cases that are in court? Mm. Uh, Gide Johnson, you know, many, Gide Gide Johnson, Johnson. you know, when I talked about the fact that the elections are over, I mean, I'm saying that we're done with the entire schedule or schedule for 2023, however it was. I mean, the actual deal. Uh, except that we have supplementary yeah, election, no, no. but Michael, I understand that. Uh, but I was also I was also going to ask you about uh, the thoughts of the IGP of please saying that uh, voter intimidation it's not going to be a thing as the police have actually deployed two thousand six hundred and sixty uh, personnel you know to these units. I mean police officers have been deployed to two thousand and six hundred police units. Uh, it sounds like hey we have been here before. We have had this story. We have had that nothing will happen. You can go out and cast your vote. There'll be no intimidation and what have you. Uh, do you do you feel the same way? Do you think that anything tangible I, will happen I, I with this stuff? You said earlier that it's deja vu again. <laughs> and we do I feel the same way. We watch we watch on national screen how a siege was made at INEC office with the impunity led by the deputy speaker and chairman of local government in river states. We watch we've seen many videos of voters intimidation and harassment. Have you seen one arrest or one prosecution? Have people been arranged after February 25th election or March 19th gubernatorial election? I was personally intimidated. I said it, I've said it many times. I said it live on air when I appeared during the elections. I was personally intimidated in going about doing my, casting my vote, just telling people that, you know what, you're not going to scatter anything here. Our vote is going to count. If any party that wins, wins. It doesn't matter which party wins. I don't care. Whoever party divide you belong to the party that wins, the result will be declared. That's where we are going. That's what's going to happen. What was the police doing? You see, as far as um, deploying police and the rest of them for 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 for, for policy, I think we need a new protocol. A new protocol with respect to that. A new protocol in the sense that if you don't hold the DPO, if you don't hold the area commander in areas where they are area commanders in areas where they are DPU, where they are violence, if they hold them accountable for violence happening, if they are not <coughs> if, if, if they are not <coughs> if they are not suspended and made to account for why violence will happen over a territory where you are the area commander, over the area in which you are the district police officer, or over a state where you are the police commissioner, and you are made to answer for why there will be violence when you are your primary responsibility is to maintain law and order. And in your state where you are the commissioner of police, you couldn't maintain that law and order. And as a result of that, people are not held accountable for their for their actions, for their for their actions and their irresponsibility. We won't go anywhere. All we we'll just be seeing is what this the IG will just sit in his office and we say we have deployed a number of police. We are going to use this amount of money. Sixty thousand of police have been divided, and the rest of it. And then we need to they need to come and explain to us the amount of money they spent for the elections. Otherwise, it's just just for the boys again. And then we should just forget about the election and allow the rule of the jungle to 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 to, to, to operate because it's the rule of jungle. That operates when you don't maintain law and order is the person that has the highest number of brute force that that that, that runs the person that has the num the highest number of talks that wins the election. But we don't want our election to be that. We want whoever wins the election to come to the ballot, to the actual votes of the people, not the manipulated votes. And are we asking too much to people that we have given so much? I'll say that, that again. Are we asking too much from people that we have given so much to? We are not asking too much. Whatever resources they require, we give it to them. And the resources does not come from heaven. It comes from you and I. It's the taxpayers' money they used to fund these agencies of government. I work, and from my, from my, from my daily job, monies are deducted by government that they will use to protect my life, my property, and make sure that my society has law and order. So if you take money from me and you can't provide me the services, you are committing the greatest crime, crime against humanity. And it's unfortunate, but nobody is held accountable. 
we witness here in Nigeria where INEC the, the INEC chairman, the INEC resident electoral commissioner was 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 allegedly set ablaze in Kano to his family. Nothing came out of it. We saw the various forms of voters intimidation and harassment across the length and breadth of Nigeria to worsen it. The one that I believe will never happen was what happened in River State. In the full glare of camera, full glare of camera like this, we saw people laying siege, stopping others from going about their legitimate constitutional rights given to them. And there's somebody who sit in one office and will tell us, you know what, uh, we'll deploy this, we'll deploy that. God will help Nigeria. It's all right. It's and they say, my local dialect, I know don't rule for it is easier for you to make vegetable soup with your mouth. Um, Judy Johnson, we'll just uh, probably just look at one again as uh, we'll just call it a wrap at this point in time. The thoughts are quite, you know, interesting. Uh, yeah. Let's look at the Banana yeah. Island building collapse as... Uh, you know, developers are shocked. That's on the one hand. I mean, there the, are the a lot of stories as to this. That happened, you know, uh, just some days back. Uh, we talked about it yesterday. Again, this is dominating the papers. Really, Messi. Sa, no, Messi. Gide, Gide, I, Gide, I know you're, you, you're itching to say something, but I, I want you to help us understand that, especially for Lagos as a mega city, Right. And the fact that, yes, very commendable that you've had sort of, some sort of laws from, you know, 2010, where the government has been concerned about the continuous building collapse in Lagos. And then, you know, there was a law that made provision for the creation of, you know, several agencies or bodies just to help uh, cope or check the excesses of the activities that might be going on. And then again, we still have... Uh, you know, constant building collapse. So yes, we had the one that happened was the biggest, you know, in 2021. And now we're in 2023, and that has happened again in the same location. What, what exactly are we missing? What exactly is the issue? I saw the amateur footage of the collapse. And I saw the entire environment. Of, is Banana Island the real island for the rich or is it a slug? You, should be, you could see the way the buildings are clustered from the amateur video. I have not gone there to look at them, to do, to do the assessment. And I'm not an engineer, but my father was. And I tell you this. You see the way the buildings are built close to one another? That's one. Then two, we all grew up knowing that in Ekoi, at least you see more than two stories built in Ekoi while we are growing up. In Ekoi, a lot of houses over there, were, were, you have trees. Ikoi is a green area that you'd love to go. You can walk through the streets and there will be you'll be covered with shade. The sun will not beat you. In the in the seventies, in the eighties, and look at the transformation because of economic interest and because of you see you have spoken about regulation. What these agencies are much more interested in is in collecting the money for approval. Lagos is one of the states that has too many, too many regulations, too many regulation, regulations with respect to how to conduct your life, to duplication of agencies. I don't know whoever will approve such buildings. You could see that there were two buildings by the side of that building that collapsed. And I asked myself this. And the same thing is happening in GRA. If you know the real GRA, the real GRA, you don't have more than one story building in GRA in the past. All you need to do is to take a trip to a GRE and see what is happening in GRE in Ikeja. And you begin to wonder what is really happening. Now, we have turned exclusive areas to slum because of economic interest. Because I look at the structure of all of these buildings. You call it an island and you are building, you are building seven, eight, nine stories all around those places when, the, when in the past, these places you just have one story building with large expanse of land in front with gardens with trees and the rest of it environmental and you know the interesting thing these people will be deceiving themselves they will say they are the environmental friendly they will spend money on planting trees and the rest of it when god created man mercy when god created man where did he put man 
He put man in the garden. He did not put man in a house. There is a correlation between trees and human survival. If you look at the way we build houses in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s, and that's why the life expectancy in the villages are better, in the rural areas are better than people living in, in the cities. You know, in the cities, we live in cages. There are no trees. There are no species. All the setbacks, the rule of setbacks, the one that you need to live behind your building and the one in front of your building, they've, they've taken away all of that. You don't see that they get. And they said they are enforcing which law. So welcome to the season of building collapsing. It's not, it's just not the end of it. Because when you don't have respect for mother nature, mother nature has a way of taking back what he has given to you. Because I, I just I, I just look at is this is this the much glorified banana island they talk about? Because I look at the buildings and I look at how scattered the buildings are and how and then seven, eight, nine stories. Where would they park their cars? Where are the trees? When God created man, he put man in the garden. He did not put man in the house. But we have graduated from building houses to building prisons. All you need to see is, you see the way, you see the way journalists were harassed from gaining access into the estate to go about doing their normal activity. Yes. You know, you saw what happened. Very, very sad. And, uh, th that's pathetic. Very, very. It's, 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 it's pathetic. Look at the design. I've said it and I've said it. Look at the estate. Jack on day. And Shagari. Particularly Jack on day. Go and take a visit to Jack on day's estate. And look at the design. Look at the layout of the buildings. And look at the trees. And look at how the just take a trip before this present set of people bastardize it. Take a trip and visit and look at the one that this was a building. Look at compare Lagos homes. I'm saying it. Compare Lagos homes in terms of the space, in terms of the design, in terms of the layout of the environment. Compare Lagos homes built by the people in power in Lagos State now compared with Jack on the estate. Just do a comparison and look at the one which is eco friendly and look at the one which is human friendly. All they think about is how to make money, and that's the reality, the sad part of it. You know, the interesting thing the people that are building the houses here at the Iron Mati, not a single person will be prosecuted. I listened to one, I was listening to one of the state officials. He said, You know what? He, you know, one of the excuses he was giving, he said, You know, the person building this house will have lost so much money. I was I feel like jumping into the screen and giving me dirty slap. That's how right I was. That you know you will have lost a lot of money. No, states are meant to regulate the conduct of everybody to ensure that people comply with rules and regulations. But you know, we will not get anything out of it. The building that collapsed in Ukraine the last time was the engineer prosecuted. People lost their lives. In that building, where their family compensated, what was the outcome? Did the commissioner, you think that if buildings have collapsed in this Sowolu's administration, how many buildings have collapsed? And under Sowolu's administration, as the commissioner for physical environment, has he resigned? As the permanent secretary being held accountable? As any of the supervising engineer in that area, has he lost his license to practice? Uh, if we begin to ask this question, they would label us, they would give us labels. You know, we are in the season of labels. You see, we are working for the opposition. Yes, we are a nation that does not keep to its rules. Wow. We are nations that it's, it's, Nigeria is, is like animal farm. You know why? Some animals are equal more than other animals. All animals are equal. So nothing will happen. Yes. If it is, if, it, if this thing yeah, has to go now. <laughs> Yes. If it is this, this building, let me just close with this. If this building has collapsed in Okokomaiko, you know what would have happened. But it's in VGC. Uh, no, it's so, not in VGC. It's in Banana Island. <laughs> I feel attacked. Yeah, it's in VGC, Banana Island. Thank you very much for correcting me. It's in Banana Island. So, Jide Johnson, you know, I feel very yeah. attacked now. We, we have to go at this yeah. point in time. 
Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. Uh, these issues are very critical. Uh, it is always for me saying that government needs to understand for everyone that vies, uh, you know, for political office, whatever it is, uh, elective office, whether it's appointive, you want to work with government, you need to understand that the reason government exists is that it would provide the basic things that the security and welfare of the people would be top priority for government. That is me paraphrasing the constitution. That's why government exists. And we can't fold our arms and allow, you know, cures and allow lawlessness and all sorts of evil to befall the people. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at the concerns of the IMF as to asking that, hey, we need to expand the bracket, you know, the tax bracket amongst other issues. Stay with us. <laughs>